we had Islam Ahash versus Alexander the Great Volkanovsky uh, going for the 155 title, the lightweight title. Uh, Volkanovsky going up in weight class, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Mahashev chilling at the same, same weight class, defending. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know what? I'll let you kick it off here, Will. What were you yeah, so like, fight? yeah, so like with context, right? It's Mahashev is defending his belt against the 145 pound champ. Uh, Volkanovsky is trying to go up, become a double champ. But there's more than just that, right? Because this is pound for pound number one versus pound for pound number two, which is mm. very significant. The UFC rarely ever does that. And uh, I think it's only happened maybe twice. And it's even arguable that those even counted. I think like DC versus John Jones, but I don't think they were technically pound for pound number one and two at that time. But this is pound for pound number one, number two. So it's not like Islam has nothing to gain. You know what I mean? It's not like, because if he wins... Cool, he defended his belt against a featherweight, but he's also potentially taking out pound for pound number one. So, so both have greatness uh, at, at on stake, basically, or at stake, and uh, at their Volkanovsky, fingertips, some would say, at their fingertips. Uh, they're in the Australia. Oyster. Yeah, they're in Australia. So Mahachev's going into enemy territory to defend his belt for the first time. Um, Volkanovski's obviously the smaller man, uh, significantly smaller. I think it was five six to 510 mm -hmm. uh, allegedly allegedly UFC height is always kind of put your yeah. skeptic glasses on right they have Kamara Usman at like six foot when he's like shorter than everybody else who's listed as six foot so <laughs> he, who knows really their measurements are off but uh yeah this was going to be one of those things where uh if Volkanovski can do this it is uh, one of the single greatest achievements in UFC history um and you might be like oh people have gone up in weight class and become double champs but stylistically being someone who's five six and the smaller man against one of the best wrestlers in the sport who also now has a size advantage on you really difficult and then so what we got was volkanovsky surprising mahachev with his wrestling and mahachev surprising volkanovsky with his striking it was a class mm. it's an all-time classic fight in my opinion it, it was it delivered on the hype pound for pound number one versus two uh it's kind of hard to deliver. I thought it delivered. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the fight too, man. Uh, Mahashev, I think, has shown even before this fight that his striking is better than Habib's. I know everybody everybody loves to compare uh, Mahashev to uh, to Habib, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, going into this, I thought that this is Volkan uh, not Volkanovski's, but Mahashev's opportunity to just show how dominant of a champion he'll be able to be, because Volkanovski mm -hmm. really earned my respect. And I know he's been trying to for a long time, but he really <laughs> earned my respect when he went up against Max Holloway the last time and he just outclassed him. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I thought, you know, Volkanovsky the real deal, man. He's as real as it gets. Uh, some would you know, say the realist. Some would say the pound for pound number one. <laughs> yeah. um, so I thought if he, even though he's a smaller man, if Mahashev's able to come in here and just absolutely dominate Volkanovsky uh, throughout mm -hmm. the fight, that uh, I think that Mahashev would be compared a lot closer to Habib, right? Yeah. And uh, after the end of the fight, I find myself thinking like, man, what if Habib was in there? How would <laughs> Habib have uh, handled Volkanovski? Because I think I, I think that uh, Mahashev has some ways to go, right? Everybody loves to make that comparison because it's his protege, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I still think that it's it's not it's not close. Between, you know, you seeing mean how like him dominant and, him and, Habib? and Habib, yeah, how dominant mm -hmm. Habib was uh, in seeing Mahashev here in this last fight. Uh, yeah, but I think you said it best. You said Volkanovski made him look human last night. Yeah, yeah, but but then it's a matter of how much of that is Makhachev, or how much of that is just Volkanovski being legitimately that great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you said, it would have been interesting to see Habib versus uh, Volkanovski, but um, yeah, I don't know. I for me, in my opinion, Makhachev's stock doesn't really go down in this fight. It's just Volkanovski continuing to prove that he is pound for pound number one and i see people uh, already arguing about that and being like how could he be pound for pound number one when he just lost to makachev it's like well that's that's the thing about pound for pound number one is imagine if volkanovsky was even bigger if they were the same size skill wise who would have won that fight probably yep. volkanovsky and volkanovsky even talking about how it's it's not he didn't lose this fight because of size like the the the, the what lost him this fight had nothing to do with the size is what he's saying but i disagree i think 
because of the size, because of the range that Makachev was able to uh, uh, use. And and props to Makachev for being able to use the range. Not everybody can. We'll talk about that in a later fight. But uh, without that, with that reach disadvantage, uh, with with the the weight, if he was even bigger, uh, those grappling situations would have been even better for him. Um, but yeah, I I, I think uh, pound for pound number one. It, it's still Volkanovski. I mean, his skill set and his fight IQ and his work ethic and his cardio, it's just incredible to watch. It's it's nuts, dude. For sure, man. And so uh I'm excited to see him go back down and defend the the featherweight title. Right. He I'd says, be I'd be on. excited to see a rematch uh with Mahashev uh to see what kind of adjustments he'd be able to make. Mahashev uh, did a really good job of timing the straight left a few times. When yeah. Volkanovski was having to blitz in to close that distance. Uh, so he did mm-hmm. that really nicely. I know he caught him also with a, a head kick uh, that seemed to wobble of Volkanovski a bit. And it was a really interesting, uh, you know, fight in the sense that, like you had mentioned, um, you know, shout just out Regen, top of the morning, fellas. Shout out Jake. Great hey, points. Jake. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Don't forget to subscribe. It was really interesting to see uh, Volkanovski get rocked. Yeah. And then. You know, we had been talking about maybe at this size, Volkanovski doesn't have the power to be able to take out Mahashev. And then as the round, or, and then the, fifth, it, round. the fifth round, yeah. he drops him. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I, me personally, mm-hmm. I would love to see this fight again. Uh, I know that, Will, you are against this uh, rematch more than likely, considering that you, we don't want anything being held up any longer. If, Am I right? So- in my opinion, I would love to see the fight. In my opinion, if they do a rematch right away, you have to take the 145-pound belt from Volkanovski. Um, mm. And and because uh, Yair, Yair deserves to get that shot. He's the interim. Uh, t- he, he has an interim belt now. So his next fight, in my opinion, you should never have to defend the interim belt. Uh, that That's ridiculous, especially if the other fighter is active. The, the true champion yeah. is active. That can't fly. So, so you'd have to if, strip him. You'd have to strip him, I think. Um, Regen says Volk should vacate and move up. Uh, he proved he's one of the best at lightweight. I mean, maybe. It's kind of it, in tough my opinion, to disagree. In my opinion, what you do is you do the Volkanovsky versus Yair. If he beats Yair, perfect. Then you can have another number one contender fight down at featherweight. That's when Volkanovsky can then go back up to light to lightweight. Uh, Islam maybe defends his belt against a true lightweight uh, at this point because now there's questions that need to be answered, in my opinion, with Makachev. And it's if a featherweight can have this kind of success against him, let's see him defend it against another uh, another lightweight. He hasn't defended his belt against a lightweight. You know, he's the lightweight champ, but he's, he hasn't defended his belt against a lightweight. Uh, Regent says number one contender fight against Dustin and then rematch with Islam. Uh, yeah, Volk versus uh, Dustin would be awesome. That'd be a very fun fight. Uh, Islam might yeah. just move up. The weight cut is so hard on him. Yeah, that's another narrative going into this that Islam had a really tough cut. Um, and maybe that had something to do with his his performance. Um, but I, I, in my opinion, Islam's stock for me does not go down in this. His striking was very surprising to me. He did a fantastic job with his striking. Um, he took Volk's back, had his back for a whole round. It's, it's just Volk is that great. You know what I mean? But like I said... Volk is already saying he rewatched the fight. He said rounds two, three, and five. It feels like he won those three rounds. Yeah, I thought he ra- won round three and five, uh, watching it back. Three and five for sure. Round two is a toss-up. I lean Islam, but if if someone gives it to Volk, you can give it up, you can give him that round. I wouldn't I wouldn't complain. But I I think I think Mahachev needs to defend his belt against a lightweight. Volk needs to then unify the belt down at featherweight. Then we see where we're at and, and what we do from there. Um, McGregor? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're probably going to see that. Uh, I don't think so, timing-wise, because that fight's not going to happen until, like, September. No, not, we not have... his next fight. But okay, we'll, I gotcha. think we're going to yeah. see it eventually down the road. Could be. Could be. Uh, Regen says, his stock only goes down for me because he had all the attributes in his favor. Yeah, but, man, there's something about Volkanovski. He, I mean, Volkanovski's the best. He's the best. He's a pound for pound number one. If anybody can overcome attributes, it's Volkanovski. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't put too much weight on that against Islam. 
Uh, Jake says, I will also say that Volk's pressure versus Islam's other opponents were a bit different. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I could see that too. I, I think, man, I'll admit when I'm wrong, Ramiro. Remember yeah. when they announced this fight, I was pissed. I was yeah. like, what are we doing? Islam just yeah. got the belt. Have him defend against lightweights. I'm You're glad we got it. the fight. I'm here for it. You're glad we got the fight, yeah. And, you know, uh, I just want to uh, also give some uh, recognition to Volkanovski uh, for his recovery, man, because he did, again, he got, got hurt. hit hard a few times, but his recovery was so fast. And I think mm -hmm. that's a, a, a little bit of a difference, too. Uh, like Jake mentions, uh, the pressure that, that Volk was able to put on Islam compared to his other opponents. Uh, he dropped uh, Oliveira. Yeah. Islam did. Mm -hmm. uh, he hurt Bobby Green. Yeah. Uh, you know, he hurt all these other fighters where after that he was able to then just capitalize, capitalize, ground and pound, get him in some type of submission. But Volkanovsky reacted so quickly whenever he was in a bad position. Uh, his urgency, they, as soon as Islam took him down, his ability to use the wizard, yeah. right, to be able to post and then and get up. Dude, it's just such an impressive performance from he, Volkanovsky last night. He also... Uh... At one point in the first round, they didn't credit Islam with a knockdown, but he knocked him. He knocked him down. He dropped him to a knee. Even Volk said in the post-fight press conference, "Like that's a knockdown." He knocked me down, but he dropped to a knee and then just stood right back up, started throwing hooks. I mean, that's his recovery saying. is incredible. You know, and incredible. and maybe that's something that uh that uh Oliveira can take away because when he was dropped, I don't think he, he was severely it, rocked, but he he. He laid back and said, yeah. you know, come into my guard. Because we've seen Oliveira be successful with that in the past. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. So just something, you know, something uh, to think about there, Oliveira, now that you're watching the podcast. Yeah, Regen says Make if we note. get Figgy Moreno four times, we need at least two of this fight. <laughs> I, I would love to see the fight again. And, and like you said, though, the difference is you can't give Mahachev an inch. Because if you nope. give him an inch, he'll take it and he'll finish you. And, and Volk didn't give him an inch. Anytime Mahachev had any type of momentum, Volk was right there to stop it. Uh, yeah. I mean, just, just an incredible. It's crazy that the, the narrative, I'm glad the narrative from a lot of people is how impressive Volkanovsky is. Because, like you said, there was, there's, he's had a lot of doubters because of those Max Holloway fights. Some people say he, he lost some of those of fights. Yeah. And, and, and you're not alone. Uh, so it's cool to see him get the recognition because, man, his, I mean, everything you want out of a fighter fight IQ, cardio. Uh, exciting striking, uh, the phenomenal heart. grappling, the heart, uh, not giving up when it gets tough. Um, I mean, just he's the epitome of what you – he's a complete fighter, man. Uh, Jake says, yeah. how Volk framed to set up his strikes. I was wondering why Volk didn't kick his legs in. We saw a glimpse of that uh, in the later rounds. Yeah, I think early in the fight, I think – because Volk does that a lot. He uh, he uses leg kicks to open up his combos with his hands, and he also ends his combos with his hands with leg kicks. He does a really good job of that, of catching people at the end of his combos where they're trying to get out of the way of the punches, and then he'll just throw that leg in and, and catch them kind of in a weird position because they're moving back. Um, mm -hmm. But I wonder if early going, before he really felt the grappling of Mahachev, he was worried about throwing that leg kick and worried about it getting caught and taken down and then later once he felt the grappling and the wrestling and the strength of islam he even said in the corner he's like he's not nearly as strong as i thought he was going to be maybe that's why he started opening up with the leg kicks later on because at first he was like you throw the leg kick uh, that's what happened with bobby green right he threw the leg here he threw the body kick and yep. uh Mahashev was able to catch it and take him down and finish him so i wonder if if uh he was a little bit more hesitant to throw kicks early on in the fight because of that and then when he felt the wrestling and he felt uh, that he could have his defensive grappling work against Makachev because most people probably don't think that that's going to work. Um, so I think that's probably why it opened up later on. Uh, Jake, uh, calling out uh, the uh, the check hook that was working for Islam throughout the night as well, which is yeah, a solid that, point. That looked really, really good because Volkanovski has to work to get in. And if it's if you can't get in quick and get out, it's it's much easier to land that check hook. Right, because if if you're darting in and out real quick, it's hard to time time out the check hook on somebody. But because yep. Volkanovski has to cover so much distance to get in, there's there's a longer window to land the check hook, and Makachev just did that flawlessly. It's a really good game plan for them to have that that check hook for someone like Volkanovski. You know, and props to uh, Islam too at the end when uh, you had mentioned that he said uh, that he's not the pound for pound uh, number I think one. He might have changed that later on i haven't i saw a headline saying that now he's the best fighter in the world but but yeah he said 
he's said multiple times, and Javier Mendez has said multiple times that he's not the pound for pound number one. And it's, yeah. it is pretty cool to see them say that. Yeah, absolutely. Just so right, much man. people hyping themselves up, you know, and it's cool to see someone be humble. Humility can go a long way, especially with fans. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, you want to move on to the uh, co-main event? Yeah. Props to both those guys, though. Legendary. Oh, absolutely. Fight. Absolutely. Hey everybody, Ramiro and Will here. Thank you so much for watching that short clip. It's just a small clip of what we covered this last Sunday. Yeah, if you want to check out the full fight card recap, uh, the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here. Uh, and don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, Hit the notification bell, goes a long way. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.